Hi there, I'm Jake and I seem to be trapped inside a spooky basement. Welcome to Project Science. Halloween is just around the corner, so I thought now would be as good a time as any to talk about ghosts. I make no promises about refraining from saying all words that way. I thought the topic would be fitting, and I thought it would make sense to go to a location appropriate to the subject matter, but yeah, I totally can't get out of here. Which is less than ideal. Nonetheless, I want to talk to you about some really straightforward scientific explanations for paranormal activity. For starters, let's talk about good old fashioned radiation. It's pretty much everywhere. Specifically, I want to talk about electromagnetic radiation. The spectrum of electromagnetic radiation is pretty huge, running from the low energy long wavelength radio waves all the way up to the really high energy short wavelength gamma rays. In between there are microwaves, infrared waves, ultraviolet x-rays, wait did I miss something? What's that tiny little sliver there? Oh, it's just all visible light. Yep, out of the huge range of electromagnetic radiation all over the universe, humans can only perceive the stuff from the range of about 430 to 770 terahertz. And to be clear, the EM spectrum runs all the way from radio waves in the single digit hertz range, all the way to gamma rays in the 24 digit hertz range and beyond. What we can see is only 3.4 times 10 to the negative eighth percent of the practical range. Granted, we aren't exposed to the whole range at all times. Being constantly bombarded with gamma rays would be, uh, let me check my notes, bad. So for what we actually deal with in life, the range from red light to violet light is all we've ever needed to see, so it's what our eyes evolved to do. Why do I bring this stuff up? To illustrate that there's still tons of radiation all around us, but none of our five-ish senses is specifically designed for any of it. But you better believe we can still notice it. All of our electronics generate electromagnetic fields of some kind, and sometimes being exposed to that radiation can make you feel not great. Anywhere from general unease to feelings of dread or panic or even the feeling of being watched. So a lot of the reports of buildings that are haunted or rooms that are hot spots for paranormal activity can actually be the results of weird wiring or high personal EMF sensitivity. Nothing otherworldly at all. But that doesn't explain sightings or reports of hauntings in old buildings or stuff throughout history before all of these electronics. So could there still be a supernatural explanation? Well, let's not jump there just yet. In science, we use a principle known as Occam's razor, which holds that the hypothesis with the fewest assumptions is the most likely explanation. You can clearly see I'm recording right now. So yeah, a rational explanation with fewer assumptions is what we're after. There's another phenomenon going on, and it still involves our old friends, Hertz. Only this time, it's not frequency of radiation, but frequency of sound. Humans can hear sounds from about 20 Hertz to about 20,000 Hertz. This range shrinks in both directions as we age, by the way. Just like with the EMF stuff, there can still be sounds just outside of our range of hearing that we don't notice directly, but they can still totally affect us, like the brown note. In particular, the stuff below our normal range of hearing, called infrasound, can have wacky effects. More specifically, sounds between 7 and 19 hertz can cause feelings of dread or panic or even the feeling of being watched. Uh, thanks, earlier me. But it doesn't stop there. Vibrations that low can literally shake your eyeballs very subtly and cause shadows to flit around the edges of your vision. So if you feel terrified and like you're being watched and then you see shadowy figures all around, you're gonna have a bad time. Vibrations in this frequency range can come from a faulty ventilation fan, to geologic events, to reverberations off of echoey chambers, and where is infrasound reported most? Old buildings, castles, basements, the kind of places reported to be haunted. Sensitivity to these waves increases the haunting feeling. How sensitive are you? I've been blasting you with 18 hertz for this whole segment. Not all individual speaker and headphone ranges may cover such frequencies. Results may vary. But what about times when we're definitely not being affected by sound or weird electronics? <sighs> Crap, I really am stuck. For example, what about when we look at old photographs or video footage? What explains so many years of finding ghosts in the background and the like? Oh, crap, my light. Uh, do I have a match or something? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, there's yet another trick that can result in... Oh, here we go. Seeing things that aren't there. Humans are smart. Sometimes a little too smart for our own good. Our brains evolved so that we recognize shapes even in abstract forms, especially faces. This helps us during development. We're able to quickly recognize people as people and objects as objects, etc. But it can be applied even further than intended. This same ability can lead us to recognize objects where they aren't. 
This is known as pareidolia. It's what allows us to see shapes in clouds or faces in inanimate objects, but it's also what allows people to think they see religious icons on a piece of toast or a face on Mars. Or an eerie figure in an old photograph, or a creepy visage in TV static. And it isn't just visual either. Pareidolia is how humans forcibly make sense out of nonsense, and that can apply to any sense. That's how ghostly audio recordings come about. Random background noise can be shoehorned into any narrative you want when your brain tries hard enough. So when you're actively looking for it, yeah, you'll definitely find some spooky stuff. But that doesn't make it real. Ah, much better. So imagine now that you're all alone in a dark place and you start to feel uneasy. Maybe you feel that way because of an EM field you're being exposed to. Maybe there are some low frequency sounds you aren't noticing. And now in that panicked state you hear something. Or see something. Maybe it was nothing. But your mind wants to make some sense of it, so it makes it into something. That right there is most of your hauntings, and that's our episode. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta figure out how the crap I'm gonna get out of this place. What was that? I think I saw something. Oh, it's getting real spooky in here, guys. I just wanna apologize for saying all that stuff about things. Oh man, what is that? What is that thing? Oh, it's a scary monster, man. Oh, I can't get out of here. I'm trapped down here. It's gonna get me. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Huh. Guess I'm not trapped in the basement after all. Oh, and that monster was just some duct tape and a bowl full of golf balls. That explains everything. Well, happy Halloween, everybody. Thanks for watching.